Hi, I'm James Vincent McMorrow. Yeah, the, uh, the album was made in uh, a house outside Drogheda. I moved up there at the start of last year and I spent six months up there on my own. Uh, I just like moved, I had a bunch of equipment that I sort of collected over the years, just crap equipment, nothing fancy or anything. And uh, I moved up. Just the idea of writing some demos and then as I went on, I sent them to my publisher in the UK and they really liked them. So I went back and kept working and working and working. After six months, the record was finished and then sent it off. And uh, the idea was to just put something out, it was something small, nothing like huge or anything like that. But they came back with this guy named Mike Cave from Liverpool, who's a mixer and uh, a really great mixer and uh, he, he did a mix of one of the songs and it sounded amazing so album went off to him and he spent a couple of months on it and uh, I went over and we finished it in December and uh, it sounds well it sounds great like I, I really love it I, am, I know I obviously love it because it's mine but uh, it sounds much bigger than I ever thought it would because it was just this little thing and now it's this big thing so I don't like the word single because it, it's just, I don't know it, why it suggests a certain thing and I wanted the record to be a record but then you have to give a song to radio to try and get them to play it and so people will buy the record so there is there's a single it's called This Whole Dark Machine it's like a song from the middle of the record and it pretty much sums up what the record is which is it was a pop record but it's you know it's a folk record and it's lots of harmonies so, so that it's a song that pretty much sums up the record as, as uh, best as possible so it's called The Soul Dark Machine and um, I heard it on the radio just in the way and actually so that was kind of good. <laughs> it was the first time I'd ever heard it. Six months on your own in a house in the middle of nowhere can be a little bit um, bleak at times. Like, because there was no internet, it was TV, but there was very little to do. It was on the beach, so I'd run a lot, but it was cold in January and February, so it wasn't that, it wasn't that fun. Um, so making it on my own was good because uh, I don't do well with others when I'm making music. It's quite a strange thing. I tried to make a record in London at the end of 2008 uh, with one of my best friends in the world. He's an amazing engineer and after two weeks I think we had a drum track recorded because I just, when there's people in the room it changes the way I work. So I just, that was, I want, that was what I wanted to do was to make it on my own. To um, so I would end up with, what I ended up with was the best thing that I could come up with because sometimes when there's other people in the room there's pressure to finish things but I knew that when I was happy with it that it was the best thing that it could be. Um, so that was great but then on the downside like I said it's not fun being on your own all that time and um, it would have been nice to have slightly better equipment like I had one microphone and that was it so trying to mic a drum kit with one microphone can be uh, trying. The documentary came about through my publisher in the UK, EMI. They came to me with an idea to... They wanted to capture two or three artists that they've signed through the process of finishing a record, putting a record out, seeing what the, watching the whole thing build, hopefully the way it's supposed to build. So um, they came to me... When did they come? To that? Around the end of last year, there were sort of meetings back and forth. There's this company in the UK called WizKid and um, they do a lot of work with E4 and Channel 4 and stuff like that. So they just came over and it was a really nice idea. The, cr the director and the crew were pretty non-obtrusive. They were like in my face and they gave me a handy cam so I could film a lot of stuff on my own so I don't need people everywhere with me. I think I'll look back and if it's captured nicely, it'll be nice to have in you know 20 years time when I look back and see my first record coming out on film. That'll be good. Yeah. I went to London because that was who respond. Like I made a demo around that time, around 2007, just when I was starting. I made a demo of five or six songs that I recorded at home. And gave them to my cousin, and he passed them to his next door neighbor in, in London. He lived in London. He lived in Fulham. And he passed them to his next door neighbor, who was like a P a PA for some guy that's in that band, one of those bands, Groove Armada, one of those dance bands, and. He had a small label called Tune Tribe, and they responded quite quickly. And then the guy who was the PA passed it around to a couple of people that he met at festivals. And I just started getting phone calls from publishers and labels. So I quite quickly was flown to the UK and started playing a lot of shows. Um, 
and then I met EMI, the guy that EMI Felix has, has become one of my best friends, and, and, and we immediately struck it, like hit it off. So it just made sense, you know. I, I you know I had no money. They offered me money. That's always a big thing. Um, so uh, it was just it, it was felt like the right thing to do. But because of that, I never really played a lot here, which meant that I never really got to immerse myself in it as much as I would like to. I'm getting to do it now, but at the time. I would have liked to maybe have stayed here for maybe six, seven more months and done a little bit more playing. Um, met a few more musicians. Like I, I know a lot of musicians here and stuff like that, but um, it's only quite recently that I've got a chance to play with them or to interact with them. In Villagers, there's an Irish band called Villagers, uh, who I'm a huge fan of and was introduced to them. I was also a fan of Connor and the Immediate, and then a good friend of mine, James, plays drums in them, and he used to come and stay with me in uh, in London. Well, I never, I didn't know him at the time. He was actually friends with my girlfriend, or his his girlfriend was friends with my girlfriend. Very intricate tapestry, and he used to come over and stay with me. And he had the demos, and he played them in my house one day, and I was just flipped out. They were amazing. So um, ever since then, I've just I've just been a fan. It's great. Like I, his record is going to be brilliant, and, and I think it's going to be great to have. That's something like that coming out around the same time as something like my record. And uh, so I would play in the villages for a day and then come back to me. <laughs>